cooking is, the reasons why we would do it, um, choosing your budwood, your scions, um, the types of grafts that are the best to kind of the, to start out with. And I say that these are beginner grafts, but really these are the only three grafts I ever use anyways, 99% um, of the time. So they're a great little rounded out tool set, these three grafts we'll talk about. Uh, and then we'll sort of talk about the aftercare. After you've grafted the tree, what do you do with it? How do you get it to the point where it's healed up and pushing out new growth and uh, ready for you to do whatever you want with it. Put it in the ground, sell it. I like to sell them, but... Um, and then we'll talk about some of the tools that I use as well, and they're real basic. And then we'll do a couple of graphs and uh, just kind of see how the process uh, how, how the process looks. So what grafting is, it's an asexual form of propagation. You're going to take two parts of two different plants and you're going to put them together. And um, the two parts are your scion, which I've said a couple times, but you're going to take a cutting off of one of these mother plants, and that's called your scion. And then the other part is the rootstock. The rootstock, I got a couple of them right here. This is a seedling plant that you grew out. I like to grow them out till they're like pencil thickness or maybe a little bit bigger. Depending on the variety, it'll take six months to a year. Um, some of my Jabota Kaba rootstocks, they're taking longer. They're probably a year and a half before they're ready. So it just depends on what you're, what you're working with. But these are probably about a year old, these star fruit um, rootstocks. And the rootstocks, they can be chosen um, in a lot of species for some positive attribute that they will confer to that plant. Whether it's um, cold hardiness or salt tolerance if you live by the if you live by the ocean or some of them are dwarfing you can have a smaller tree or some of them will increase vigor so, so with a lot of the citruses if you use lemon root stocks they'll be they'll grow that much more vigorously which the commercial guys kind of like um, kind of like that attribute some of them uh, are resistant to soil-borne pathogens like Phytophthora as well, so it, or uh, nematodes, things like that. All right, so that's the what. The why, well, there's a few reasons. I, I got four of them here, but there's probably more. The first is just to propagate these superior cultivars. Um, the process has been going, they've been doing, they grafting for thousands of years, two to 3,000 years that they know, but it probably goes back farther than that. Um, honestly. So who knows how old some of these uh, cultivars are that have kind of come down generation to generation. It's a way to preserve those and, um, and make more of them. Um, and then the second one, this one's equally as big to me, and it's to skip the period of juvenility. So the period of juvenility in a fruit tree is the time from that seed germinating till the time that it flowers and fruits for you. So in some species, this can be seven to 10 years in things like citrus or mangoes. That's a long, that's a long time to wait. Uh, avocados up to 15 years, that's a long time to wait for some guacamole. Um, but we can kind of get that down to two to three years through grafting. It, a lot of them will flower right out of the gates. Avocados, you'll graft them, they'll push out new growth and have flowers on them. You don't want to let them hold on to those fruit. You will cut those fruit off. Um, but it's, you get to skip that period of juvenility and that's huge. And then the third one I have down here is just to enhance the pollination. Um, and this is especially helpful if say you have you have limited space, right? And you want to grow apples. Uh, we have three or four varieties that we can grow where we get enough chill hours for them. But if you don't have that much room for two, you can take, say, your Anna apple and graft a Golden Door set or an Ein Shamir uh, cutting onto that tree, and now it's going to cross pollinate. You're going to get your apples. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a, a way to um, save space, and um, you can get a bunch of different. Uh, varieties onto the same tree and kind of piggybacking off that you can kind of extend your fruiting season in a, li a limited space as well so and you know a lot of these things like mangoes have an early a mid and a late season variety tons and tons of them um, so maybe you can't have three mango trees but you can have one mango tree with three different varieties on it and you can't probably eat 200 mangoes all at one time you could freeze them you can do other things with them but if you stretch that season out, it's a good way to have mangoes for, or avocados, you can get avocados for six or eight months out of the year with the, if you pick the right three varieties. So that's, that's kind of a, an awesome solution if you've got limited space. Um, and now we'll kind of go into choosing the scions uh, that you're gonna graft. And there's kind of two categories for this in my mind. Um, you have 
trees that you're gonna uh, graft that are dormant and they're just about to break their dormancy and wake up for the season. Um, and then you have the non-dormant types, which are your sort of your subtropical and tropical fruit trees, your mangoes and star fruits and all that stuff kind of falls into that category. The former category, you know, apples, plums, persimmons, these are all deciduous trees. They're going to drop their leaves. Um, they're going to go to sleep for the winter and you want to kind of, the timing is kind of critical on these. You want to graft those trees just before they're going to kind of break their dormancy and wake up. So, and if you're ordering scions online, a lot of those scions are offered at a time that's gonna kind of be perfect for you. So when those go on sale, you buy them, go ahead and get them grafted. And I did this with some Atamoyas here recently. And a lot of the Anonas, they, they kind of go dormant and they'll drop all their leaves. They can take a lot more cold when that happens. Um, and here's two of them. So let's see, when did I do these? 224, so eight, seven. So that's for a couple of weeks ago. Within two weeks, they started w waking up and pushing out some new growth on them. Now, we're not through the wood yet. They can still fail. It happens all the time where they'll push out some growth. And then for whatever reason, usually it's too much water, not enough water, too much sun. They can fail on you. But we're kind of through the first hurdle with those. And it didn't take any time at all, really. All right, and when you're choosing your scions, your dormant trees like these, <clears throat> the, the cuttings are gonna be fully lignified. They're gonna be no soft wood. They're gonna kind of look like this stuff down there, hardened off. The buds are not gonna be swollen at all. Um, they're gonna look like they're asleep. And then with your non-dormant, your subtropical stuff, you wanna choose those scions just as the buds are starting to swell. And let's see if we got an example of that here. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see and you guys can come up when we start doing the cuttings. But you can see if you come look that there's um, some growth just starting to push out. If you go under that, you can see it's barely just starting to push. And that's kind of what you're looking for is ju they're just getting ready to go. And that's when you wanna get them. And you could probably graft that one up there. It's not gonna do anything, but if you have two or three buds below it that look like they're ready to go, that's kind of how you wanna choose those scions. And everybody, we'll get everybody a closer look at that as well. All right, so here are the types of grafts. And like I said, I have down here types of grafts for beginners, but I've been doing it for a long time now and I use the same three grafts over and over again. There are guys out there that do super complicated stuff. It looks really cool, but is it necessary? I don't know, maybe you just get bored doing cleft graphs all the time and you gotta uh, you know, ratchet it up a notch. And I think it's cool to watch and hopefully I'll get into some of that stuff someday. But these are like tried and true. They're easy, they're versatile. Um, like your cleft graft, this is the first one. You can use it on the non-dormant or the dormant species. So your subtropical stuff or your deciduous stuff. Um, super easy and all you're doing is you're cutting a V in the bottom of that cutting and then you're making a corresponding slit down the middle of your rootstock after you cut the top off. And then you're just fitting those together and taping them up. Like I said, it's like, a, it's like the simplest puzzle in the world but you've got to make the two puzzle pieces. Easy, it's really easy and once you get a few of them under your belt, um, you're off to the races. You, once you get that aha moment, it's uh, super easy. The veneer graft, a lot of your mangoes, and there's a few other types of fruit trees you would do the veneer graft. I mean, I, it's kind of a next a level two graft, but it's not too difficult to master. You're cutting off a little more material, um, but it's not a big deal. And the key when you're lining this stuff up is the cambium, that little thin green layer when you cut into a tree, um, you want to line that up on your scion and on your rootstock. So if you have a, a scion that's a little too small or a little too big, it's not that big a deal. You just want to slide that thing over one side or the other and, and you want to line that cambium up and they'll heal up. They want to heal. They're, um, they're tough. They've been around for a long time and they can usually figure their way out through the, whatever damage that you're doing. So the key is just lining up that, that, that green layer. And your veneer graft is mostly, I just see those done on some of that subtropical and tropical stuff, your mangoes and your jackfruit. Um, there's a modified veneer graft that they use for uh, jackfruit, but it's, it's a very simple thing um, overall. Now, those grafts where you're cutting stuff and putting stuff together, 
you kind of want to do for the subtropical stuff you're kind of looking at fall and spring to, uh, is your timing on doing that stuff you can do it throughout the summer you instead of getting 85 percent you might only get 50 percent of your graphs um, and if i'm going too fast or if anybody has any questions shout them out um, but there's a third graft, and this one's called the approach graft. And with this graft, both plants stay on their own roots. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out, you're either gonna get something that you can set that root stock on top of, or I've seen guys tie, actually tie the, the root stock onto the tree. And so there, you have that, that little pot just hanging there, and you're gonna remove material from both of those that corresponds, and then you just tape them up. And the benefit to that is that since they're on their own root systems, the success with them is like almost 100%. Like you're very rarely are they not gonna take. And if they don't take, you just try again. You just take the thing off, you make two more cuts, you retape it, um, it's not a big deal at all. So, uh, uh, if, you, if I cut this one, if I topped it and it fails, it's probably gonna send another shoot off, but we're gonna have to wait till that shoot is uh, of a size that we can use and graft onto again. With the approach graft, you just spin the thing around, you make a new cut and bam, you slap them back together again and you get another shot at it. And you can do this one at the, throughout the heat of the summer, it doesn't matter how hot it gets. Um, since they're on their own roots, as long as you keep everybody watered, you can kind of do this at any time of year. All right, and the aftercare. After you've grafted your trees, the number one thing is you wanna keep them out of the direct sun. Um, I, I keep them in 100% shade. There's like a little bit of filtered light coming down through, but not very much. And it's under a big oak tree. That's kind of where I put all my stuff. And then my mat, I can just kind of walk that thing from right under that tree out towards the edge of that mat. And every time I move it, it's gonna get another hour of, of sun. And as you walk that thing to the edge of the mat over the course of a couple or three weeks, it's gonna harden off. And then by the time it gets over to the edge, it's pretty much ready to go. And the other thing is don't overwater them. They don't need to be watered every day. I wait for them to just about be dried out and then I water them again. Too much water and not enough water are a, uh, two of the killers of your graphs. I mean, they're the main two. And that and the sun, those are the three variables you need to kind of control. All right, and we'll kind of talk about some of our tools. I mostly just use these grafting knives. This one has kind of a square blade and on the back it has this kind of scalloped edge. Some of your grafts you can do like T-buds and stuff. You'll make your cut and then you can slide that underneath the bark. Um, and for those kind of grafts, those are best in, in spring when the, when the bark is slipping. Uh, you'll make your cut and you can kind of slide that scalloped edge underneath. But you don't, you don't use that very often. Um, it's kind of a graft that I'm playing with, but uh, the other blade on that guy is kind of that hawk bill style blade. And that one I don't really use for grafting much, but I, I do air layers. And when I do air layers, I kind of like that curve as I'm going around to remove the bark. That's another topic for another day though. Who makes that knife? This one is just some cheapo Amazon deal. I think it costs like 15 or 20 bucks. So Amazon has a million of these things. Yeah, yeah, they're, they, they're, it might've been like 12 or 15 bucks. I don't know, they're cheap. What's that? Oh, did yours? Nice. Speaking of tape, this is buddy tape. This is what I like to use. This is my sweet little buddy tape necklace right here. Now let's do it like this. So I like to keep this, and if you're doing a lot of graphs and you have something like this, so everything is, you know, kind of, you keep everything real close to you. Um, and I, because I, I, if I set something down, I'm 100% going to lose it. And I'll spend the next 20 minutes trying to figure out what I did with it. Um, this is another style, and I, this is an, another cheapo. I, don't, I never use this one, but there's, the point of that is there's a million of these. Honestly, what I use most of the time now is a utility knife because I never have to sharpen this. If, if it gets dull, I just pop the blade out, turn it around, I get another shot at it. They last for a long time. These are always getting dull and I'm always um, losing the sharpener that I have for them. Uh, I gotta get my life together. So, I mean, I like using this knife, but this thing is just razor sharp here and um, I like using these. And there's smaller ones in this if you've got smaller hands or whatever. Um, and I kind of choke up on these anyways, I'm kind of, um, I'm up here with it, so I have a better control. But I, I kind of like the, um, the razor at this point. Label all your stuff. It's super annoying when you don't label your stuff and you're like, oh, what are you? <laughs> Three weeks later. 
Um, you're gonna want to keep your stuff clean before you start grafting. I use hydrogen peroxide and alcohol. I don't always use both of them together. I'll usually use one or the other, depending on whatever spray bottle I have laying around, which I forgot, by the way. But uh, alcohol will pretty much take care of anything you need to take care of. And then this one, this is one of my favorite tools right here. This is just a clothespin, but you've only got two hands. And some of these grafts, like your veneer graft, it doesn't want to stay in there like the cleft graft does. And you can kind of throw that on top so you can free up both your hands to do the rest of your grafting. So stuff like this, I've seen people use all kinds of funky little clamps. And then you're gonna want some kind of pruners to cut your scions and stuff like that. Now, another word about the, buddy, uh, the tape. Um, this is called buddy tape. This stuff is permeable. It doesn't really get that attribute until you stretch it though. You can kind of see it goes a little bit clear when you do that. So this is, this is a breathable material. And um, the benefit to that is you don't have to take it off. It actually breaks down in the UV from the sun. Um, the, the one thing I would caution you about, cause I do this move where you want everything to be kind of tight together. And what I'll do is at the end of that, I'll kind of twist this. I, I say I spaghettify it. So I'll twist it like this and then I'll go around that graph to keep everything real tight. Sometimes this will not break down. And if you're not careful, it will kind of start as the tree starts growing out, it'll kind of eat into the tree and you'll get this kind of hourglass shape. And that weak point will break on you at some point. Um, I've seen avocado trees just fall in half with, with the wind because that didn't, that was constricted too much for too long, but it's not a big deal if you're out there watching your stuff anyways. And if, if you don't have a thousand tree, if you've got 10 tree, it's easy to keep an eye on that. And I keep some exacto knives and stuff around and sometimes I'll just give it a little nick. And once you kind of cut through it, as it grows out, it'll open itself up the rest of the way. Just keep an eye on it so you don't lose any, you don't get through that stage where you could lose your tree and now you're through it and everything's healed up and then you have this constricted area and it just falls over in the wind at some point. Another thing a lot of like the old school guys use is rubber bands, which I don't really use those. Um, but they work really good. They also break down in the sun. So you can use that to, to go around your graft and hold everything together real tight. And a couple, three weeks later, it's just gonna basically gonna disintegrate in the sun. Um, so that's another one. They sell grafting rubber bands. You can just go buy a bag for $3 of a million rubber bands and cut them and use those. Um, that's kind of everything right there. We just breeze through all that stuff. And now, does anybody have any questions before we move on? We'll kind of look at some of these scions here and get a closer look at, you know, kind of what you're looking for in the buds as they're pushing out. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm sorry, we got here a little bit late. No problem. Um, what about lemon trees? Mm -hmm. um, we had a ponderosa lemon tree and I'm sure it was grafted mm -hmm. um, and it died. And we have a volunteer that came up, but I don't know if it came up from the root or from the seed. It's 99%, it's the root stock. Is it real thorny? Yes. Yeah, so her question was, her citrus tree died back and now some sprouts have come up. And are those the Ponderosa lemon this year originally? Uh, it's highly unlikely if, there, if a, you have a citrus die back and it comes up and it's super thorny again, um, it's, it's the root stock. Uh, the, uh, the period of juvenility for citrus, they are super thorny. So what you have is like new wood um, from that rootstock. It's probably not nearly as old as the scion that they took to put on it. That scion, when you cut that off, it thinks it's however old the tree is that it came from. So yeah, it's the rootstock, but you know what? You can let that grow up and you can kind of graft something else onto that if you want. That's called top working. I mean, people do it all the time. Um, so it's not, you have this root system that you've developed and you can make use of that root system by grafting onto it now. Um, and that when you graft on, when you top work a tree, they grow really, really fast. Uh, all these fruit trees, when they want to kind of have the same amount of root system underground as they have top growth above the ground. And when you start messing with that ratio, you remove a bunch of the stuff off the top, it starts sending all these signals to grow, grow, grow. So if you graft onto that, that thing will just take off. So you can cut that back again and let one shoot come up and graft onto that. Okay, so right now it's like 
once you kind of looks like the tree in front of you. Thin like this? Yeah. Yeah. Only, a lot bigger. Only yeah. Up on the top. If you've got a buddy with a with a good citrus variety, go get you a piece and that would be an excellent um, little experiment for you to do to see if you can get the their citrus are super forgiving. Like you can get them to heal up and, and you can get them to graft real easily. Absolutely, yeah. Yep, sure can. Pretty much any variety. I mean, the commercial, um, the commercial nurseries that make the trees, they use root stocks for specific reasons on specific varieties. But for you in your backyard, none of that stuff matters. You're, you don't need a thousand pounds off that one tree. Like, you can put pretty much any citrus on there. I mean, you might want a thousand pounds off of it, but um, yes, do that. Go exper experiment. That's a great place to start, as a matter of fact. You have a root stock already. I mean, that's the, well, the annoying part is that this took a year to get to this point. So you don't have to wait a year. You're, you're off to the races. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes, sir. Is there a season or can you graft all year? Well, you can graft all year, especially with your things like your mangoes and your star fruits and, you know, your avocados. Um, I was saying that earlier. In the dead of the summer, when it's really, really hot, it's, it's going to reduce your your percentage of takes but you know how many are you grafting i mean if you graft two you're probably going to get one in the middle of the summer you're going to get more like an 85 or 90 percent takes uh if you do it in the spring and the fall but i'm grafting throughout the year and i'm doing cleft grafts the main thing is to keep them out of the sun and if you're top working a tree you get like a paper bag or some breathable material and you throw it over your cutting until it heals up just to kind of protect it from the sun like that's the real killer in the summer um, but yeah you can do it year round or you can use the approach graph like I was saying I mean you're you're approaching 100% um, success on, on the approach graph and like I said if it doesn't take you just spin that bad boy around make a new cut uh, and a corresponding cut on your rootstock or on your mother tree and bam you just you get another crack at it so yeah I'm grafting throughout the year I think that's definitely uh, it, it really your cultural conditions are going to determine your success so the amount of sun that it's getting the amount of moisture you're gonna have to water it more in the summertime but yeah now your dormant stuff like your apples and your a lot of your anona species you can't do those in the winter um, they're they're dormant you could go ahead and graft them and they'll sit there but and i had this actually happen i grafted some persimmons um and the persimmon trees were in the ground and one of the signs, something, not, I, I think I even maybe me walking by, I must have bumped it and it, I came back one day. So the longer it's sitting there, the more chance you have of something, you know, bumping it or whatever. But yeah, it's totally doable. You could let that sit there for three months and when they wake up, it'll just heal over and you're off to the races. But a lot of your material is not going to be really available until you're at the end of winter, just going into spring. So, if you have your own trees, then it doesn't matter. Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, out of our compost pile, we got a, a, some volunteers mm -hmm. of an uh, avocado tree. Oh, cool. Probably four, four or five years ago, and it's about six foot tall. Oh, nice. Uh, but uh, I don't know if we've got 15 years to wait. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Top work that tree. You All you got to do, if you can find a piece, and you can order avocado signs online. There, You can go on Etsy and find them. You can just do a search. And you'll find, especially in the spring, you'll find plenty of budwood to buy. And by by grafting mm -hmm. that scion, mm -hmm. the scion is the piece that you're putting onto your rootstock. So okay. your your volunteer, that's your rootstock. Okay. Yeah. And we'll, I'll show you the exact graft. You're going to want to do a cleft graft, and we'll do a couple cleft grafts. Okay. And, and they're same, really easy. We have uh, a couple of mangoes. Too. Yeah, same exact, same exact deal. Now, <clears throat> most of your um, commercial mangoes are veneer grafted, but I've cleft grafted plenty of mangoes. They're, they'll take very easily. And they'll... Fruit much sooner. Much sooner, yes. Okay. Much, I mean, within a couple years, sometimes three years, maybe max. You'll that first year, even if it flowers and holds a fruit, I don't let it keep it. I mean, maybe one. If it puts three on it, if you can't help yourself, maybe let it hold on to one. I'm like that, but it's best just to remove that fruit, and you get another. Stronger. Yeah, you get a. They get. Um, um, they just get. They're ready to fruit sooner. They're more established quicker. I yeah, guess. How do you spell scion? S C. S. Okay. S C I O N. Yep. Scion of a. 
So you can just search avocado scions or avocado budwood. You could just search for budwood as well. B-U-D-W-O-O-D. -O -O yes, sir. Um, so with star fruit, I've kind of realized that just doing propagations with them mm -hmm. will not have that much success. But with um, with grafting, what's a good root stock to use? For I I whatever star fruit you have, I have tons of success with star fruit. They're a super easy one to graft. The you just want to make sure you're choosing that scion at the right time. Those okay. buds are just pushing out at the right time. I mean, I did five or six of them a couple months ago. I brought a couple of them with me, but um, that's what they, all of them pushed out. I think I lost one out of that group of five. So I don't know what the percent, I'm not a math guy, but <laughs> that's pretty good. I was only trying to do like normal, uh, like just cutting propagation. Oh, you're trying to stick cuttings? Yeah, they're not gonna, you can get them to root. I've seen people use aloe and all kinds of stuff or do them in bananas. I don't know if any of that stuff's real when I watch those videos on YouTube, but um, they look fun and I, I might try that someday, but don't stick cuttings of stuff. I mean, you can stick cuttings of certain things, uh, fruit trees uh, like guavas or stuff. There's a few, um, but you're, they end up with a much weaker root system when you do that. So you get a good strong wind or if you're not in a protected location and that wind blows through, that it's just gonna push. And that actually, had, they used to do a lot of citrus cuttings for commercial stuff. And when some of these hurricanes came through down south, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, 30, 25 years ago, that whole entire groves just got pushed over by, by the wind. And if you graft those same trees, they're, they, you might break a few limbs, but it, this, the tree is gonna survive. I mean, they tried to stand them back up, but once that happens, it's, it's a wrap. I mean, you might get a couple more years out of them, but it's gonna affect them. Start growing, if you got a Fuang Tung or whatever your variety, you can go to the grocery store buy, and buy some star fruit, and just start growing your seeds out. Okay. And just graft those bad boys. You'll get like approaching 100% success on them. So what, so you use star fruit as uh, the root stock? Yeah, so you're gonna use something, the same species for most, the same genus for some. So prunus, what all your apples and, uh, and your peaches and your pears, that genus you can, um, you can use, you can graft onto those, that whole group is compatible. There some are more compatible than others. The, you can have some compatibility issues, but for the most part, you can grab, graft an apple onto a pear. You can graft, you know, a peach onto a plum. Um, and like I said, it's not always true, but it usually is. For something like a star fruit, you can go get any star fruit variety, grow that seed out, and then you can um, graft any variety that you want on top of that. So yeah, start growing your seeds out. Just graft them if you want them. Um, you'll have a real weak, weak tree with some of these. Some trees you can you can do that, but I, I don't understand grafting. Mm. Also. No, we're, I'm good. about to show you in uh, just a minute well, here. We got a star fruit tree and it and it does produce, mm -hmm. but I'm always afraid I'm going to lose it in, the, in a freeze. Mm -hmm. And I, I've now got a sleeping bag that I've <laughs> designated for. But uh, if I wanted to graft onto that, would I get another tree? Uh, yeah, well, you're just going to need some kind of rootstock. So the next fruit you I'm get... I'm using that tree, mm -hmm. using the one I have. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's your mother tree. That's where your scion, your budwood is going to come from. But now you need a rootstock for it. Okay, that's what I... Mean. Yeah, so now you need to go find... Go you, Next time you have a fruit, you can just pull that bad boy apart, get all your seed. They germinate like almost 100% as well. The seeds are real easy to germinate, real easy to grow. Six months to a year, you'll have pencil thick. This is about a year, but they could be uh, two thirds of this size and you could graft onto them. You, they, can, they can be even smaller. There, a, a lot of the Jabota Cabas, they call it micro grafting. They take teeny tiny, my fingers are too fat for that, but they take teeny tiny little cuttings so and, and graft them. Dig under my mulch and get one of Yeah, if you've got a seedling. Seed oh yeah, you've got fruit sitting on the ground. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, I mean, when you do, the, when the next fruit you get, mulch, you know. yeah, start start growing your uh, start growing them out, and that that'll be excellent practice for you. Hey, Randy. Yes, sir. Talk about uh, growing out the seedlings for that. Oh yeah. And then you and yeah, I, soil mixes, I don't I don't use anything special. I do use a, a seed starting mix for them, but I actually go to. Um, Oh, what are they called? Did you get all your bulk materials from uh, Reliable Pete? 
you go to Reliable P, I get it by the truckload, so it might be not applicable to you, but you can go get any bag of seed starting mix or you just want something nice and fine. They'll, they'll still germinate in real chunky stuff, but it, it, it seems to do a little bit better. And uh, some potting soil. potting soil will be fine. You might want to lighten it up a little bit by adding some perlites. Most of those potting soils are pretty heavy and over the course of that year in that small pot, they'll kind of compact and compress and it'll slow the rate of growth of that seedling. Um, but it's actually very simple. And for things that are like the star fruit, um, you know, I just get a Ziploc bag and I get some vermiculite um, and I just moisten it you, until you can barely just squeeze out one drop of water out of that vermiculite, put that in my bag and throw my seeds in there and you'll see them start to germinate. And when they do, you can pull them out and you can put them in a, like a little four inch pot. Or I, I like these little one gallons cause they can sit in there for a year, no problem. And by the time they're ready that way, um, you know, you're not, you're not mo moving them from a four inch pot to a one gallon or whatever else. The two, there's two gallon pots that I really like. That's a two gallon, I believe, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So you could start them out in that. You don't want to start them out probably in anything bigger than that, but, um, yeah, your seeds are real easy to start out. Um, things that are deciduous, it's just a, the time of the year. You got to get your hands on that stuff and that stuff needs a period of, of, um, of cold before they'll germinate. So if you have peach seeds, if you got your Tropic Beauty, um, trop you, people don't know this, but peaches will, they'll fruit on their own roots in like two or three years sometimes. It's better to graft them because you know what you're gonna get. There's so much variability if you grow them out from seed, but all you'll do is you'll put them in that same vermiculite and stick them in the refrigerator for three months. So, and at the end of winter, you'll pull them out of the refrigerator, pot them up, and they'll just, most of them will come up as well. Yeah, your seedlings are really easy. All your tropical and subtropical stuff, just I like the Ziploc bag, bag method. I do a bunch of uh, Garcinias that way and all kinds of stuff. All right, anybody else? Should we do a graft? All right, let's graft something. Okay. All right, we'll use that as a rootstock. All right, so when we're grabbing our rootstock, let's see what... Uh, what kind, I just went and picked up these trees. I didn't have anything big enough, so, but these have enough wood that we can use on them. Now you do kind of want to pick something out that's going to be, oh, sorry, I'm out of your, your frame here. You do want to pick something out that's going to be kind of a similar size. You don't want them to be too, too far off. But as I'm looking at this, something off of this piece right here is going to be pretty good. And we've got a couple of buds right down here. That's a perfect one, so I'll cut this off. And I'll, I can kind of walk her this one right here. Yeah. That bud's too far gone. Am I in the frame? Yeah, you're good. And that one's just about perfect right there. There's another good one up here. There's another good one down there. All right. So when you're choosing your scion, you want four good buds. Um, and one of those might be a little too far gone, but if you, as long as you have two or three of them, you're probably going to be successful. So, and I want that cutting to be six to eight inches, maybe. They can be a little smaller. One, two, three, four. Let's do a fifth one on that one. So that one's maybe even a little shorter than six inches, but it'll work just fine. You're going to break that off right there. We're going to get our sweet little buddy tape uh, necklace back on. And they do, this stuff's kind of expensive. This stuff's like 40 bucks a roll. I actually f um, found this one, but it lasts forever. I mean, you'll get hundreds and hundreds of trees out of one roll. Um, you're gonna use a piece that's like, you know, that big. Um, and the perforated stuff I prefer, but I found this stuff was like 20 bucks. Go to the, um, the bonsai supply stores online. You get the, it's a Japanese product. I, that's where I found it like half price. But if you buy it from any of these yahoos around here, they're gonna, they're gonna hit you in the head for it. All right, so when I go to wrap this sign, I'm gonna take my piece of buddy tape. You can also use parafilm. Um, I've seen guys use plastic bags. You can use, the whole point is just to keep that moisture in. We're gonna stretch this. As we wrap, we're gonna stretch that, that film. And that's what's gonna give it its breathability. So we'll just go up our whole cutting like that, pull another piece out. You don't have to be super gentle. If you break it, no problem. Just pick it up. Keep stretching as you go. 
Make sure you have the orientation right, because if you graph this upside down, it's no bueno. <laughs> I've done that before. All right. All right, so there is our scion right there. Maybe it's four or five inches long, something like that. We'll get this guy out of the way. And this is our cleft graft. This is like my, this is your go-to. You can graft pretty much everything with a cleft graft. This is our rootstock. We're gonna clean this bad boy up, uh, any of those lower leaves. And you wanna kinda wanna hold your scion sort of uh, up and down this thing. See where it matches up pretty good. That's gonna be pretty good right there. Does that, did that hurt your feelings a little bit? Yeah, no. I, I, I know, but that, the real work is about to begin. I, I feels you never be afraid to cut your trees. This thing, like I said about the ratio of roots to, to top growth, when you do this, even if I just let this thing go, I'd, in a month I come back and this thing would be as tall as it was because it wants to maintain that ratio. So it's going to bounce back really fast. I know that hurts your guys' feelings. I knew that was going to happen. All right, make that nice and flat. All right, I'm gonna use my, my utility knife for this one. Um, and I kind of cut toward myself, but I'm kind of pulling the scion away. So you wanna be careful with this part of it. Um, so I see a lot of people doing this move right here. That's fine as well. Um, however you're comfortable doing it. Uh, this is how I like to do it. And you don't wanna whittle this thing down too much where sometimes you can't help it. You're making your cuts, your knife is dull. You're, you have to go back and forth a few times. But you want a nice long cut and you want to hopefully do it in one or two passes. Like that's pretty good right there. So we'll flip it over now. That's pretty good right there as well. And this is a little short on this. You want the belly of that cut to be a, a decent length, but you don't have to go, you can just kind of take the, the shoulder off on that, on that cut there. Bam, so that's gonna be pretty good for our... Uh, can you hold that piece up? I can. What do you mean by the belly? Uh, the length of the, okay. that, the face of that cut. And this one's not perfect, but it's good enough. You're just cutting that V down into the bottom. All right, and now we have our rootstock here. We're gonna just go right down the middle of this. And depending, if I had a mismatch in size, I might come out to the edge. Like if this was a little bit smaller, I can cut closer to the edge. As long as you line up, um, as I showed that to you, you could see a little green outline. That's your, your, um, that's your cambium. That's, the, that's what you want to line up right there. So then I'm just going to take and cut straight down the middle. And I kind of do like a little rocking motion with this. And that's probably going to be pretty good right there. <clears throat> and then we're just going to fit the puzzle pieces together. There's literally nothing to it. And this one's a, this scion is a little bit small. I could have cut up a little bit higher, but that's a pretty good fit right there. This is a cleft graft, cleft. So search this, you can find videos. How's that good? You, you can find videos all day long of this graft right here. You get the sizes perfect so mm -hmm. you line up on both sides. Yeah. Oh, it's a success. Yeah, I mean, maybe marginally, but as long as you get one, it, it wants to heal. These, they're tough. That, like, just like me just chopping the top off of that. Yes, ma'am. What was the purpose of the buddy tape around there? The buddy tape is to hold, it, it, it will allow gases to exchange. So it's going to hold the moisture in, but CO2 and oxygen are going to be able to flow through it. And we're going to take another piece of buddy tape and we're gonna start just underneath of our cut there and we're gonna start wrapping that bottom to the top. All right, and there it's kind of cleared off. And now this is what I was saying. I always give it a little twist at the end and my last couple of wraps are gonna look like a piece of spaghetti or twine around here. And I do that because the buddy tape, it doesn't have a whole lot of strength if you pull it, but if you twist it, it you can kind of crank down on it a little bit harder. Um, you could also, if it wasn't, if you don't do that, just take one of your clips here and kind of hold that in place. And that can stay there the whole time while it's healing up. Um, when you're doing your, your 
uh, cleft graft your top working a tree, you, you can do that because you know the wind's blowing it, the branches are knocking into each other. You might be big clumsy oaf like me and, and you're brushing past stuff and knocking stuff. That way it, it gives it a little more support. I never do that, but you can. All right, and then this bad boy, make sure you, trust me, this will annoy you if you don't do this. Which one did we cut off of? This one, right? This is a Shree Kimbangan. So we're gonna make sure we write Shree Kimbangan. And if you're gonna use shorthand, make sure you know what your own shorthand means. Because <laughs> I've done that before as well. Like, I don't know what uh, SK is supposed to mean here. And then I'll always throw the date. What's today's date? The seventh, right? Yeah. I'll throw three seven on here. That way when it starts to push out, I kind of know, oh cool, that took 10 days or that took 21 days or whatever the case may be. So that one's done. That's now gonna go in the deepest part of shade that you have. We're gonna let it just about dry out. Then we're gonna water it again. And then as the new buds start pushing out, we can sort of start inching it towards the light a little bit and letting it harden off. So there's one. Let's do another one just real quick. Let's see, I wonder if we could do a little veneer graft real quick. Let's see if we've got a piece. All right, let's do this one right here. She'll grow back. back up a little bit to the after the grafting part, mm -hmm. getting it in the shade. Now where mine's already in the ground, you're mm -hmm. saying like put a... Get a uh, yeah, get a paper bag get um, something that's gonna be kind of breathable, some natural material. You can, you know the um, bags that citrus fruit come in, they're like that mesh, you can use that stuff. I've, I've used that a lot. You can put up a piece of shit, put a couple of T posts in the ground, put some shade cloth over it. You just need to get through that initial probably couple of weeks. So if you can just protect it for that first week or two, it, it's gonna heal over. Once it's healed over, it's gonna start pushing out, it'll be fine. Citrus are super, super tough. Yeah, no problem. All right, so we're gonna do our veneer graft. We're gonna take fewer nodes on this one. And I've never actually done this with a, uh, with a star fruit, so let's see how this works. So with the veneer graft, we're kinda kind of, we're gonna take a flat part off the whole back of this thing. And be careful with this one. Matter of fact, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do like. <laughs> we'll do a little rocking motion until we get it started. And once you get it started, it's kind of going to come loose. And this is a little thin. Usually, like a big fat mango scion, you can just kind of do in your hand and peel it down. So that's a little wavy. We're going to try to knock some of these high points down. We, we want this to be pretty flat if we can help it. All right, so we've taken the back off of that for our veneer. Now we're gonna take, and they call this the ramp cut. I don't know why, they just do. And we're just gonna take, we got our little, our ramp cut and the back is flat. All right. Now this one, this one's not gonna break your heart quite as much because we're gonna now just make a corresponding cut on the side here. And I do my bottom cut first. I'm just gonna go in, not even like a third of the way, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take, let's see how long this bad boy is, about right here. And we're just going to trim, whoops, went too far. Whoops, now I went really far. And that doesn't matter, all that stuff's gonna heal over anyways. All right, now we're gonna take that ramp cut. We made like a little lip here that we can kind of stick that in, all right? And we wanna make sure at least one of those sides is lined up pretty good. And this is a good place to use one of our clips so we have a hand free here. So we can kind of hold that guy in place, make sure we're happy with how it's lined up. And we want it pretty perfect, at least on one side. It's better on this side than the other side, but that's pretty good. And now there is a little gap as I'm looking at this, but we'll use a couple of these clothespins and we'll kind of put a little pressure on it when we're done. So that's kind of holding in place. We'll grab another piece of our buddy tape. 
Usually you see this done on mangoes, jackfruit. I've never really used it on a star fruit, but I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work. I just wanted to demonstrate it for you guys. And then we're just gonna go ahead, taper up. So growth will start shooting from that part there? One of these buds, yes. And there's one more thing we're gonna do. And I'll show you in just a second and explain why we do it. All right, so there's still a little gap in there. I'm gonna take another piece of buddy tape and I'm gonna kind of twist this one up, even though we're gonna use our clips on here. And I'm gonna push on this and try to get that gap to close up. Thank you. All right, bam. And this stuff sticks to itself. So on your last little stretch, just kind of pull it until it breaks and press it together and this stuff will stick together. And now I see a, a little bit of a gap up top here. So I wanna use a couple of these. These are a little small. There's some plastic ones where the, you have a little bit more clearance on. I kind of like those better. Yes, son. So bam, we'll kind of throw those on. And that one, I guarantee you, that one's probably gonna work out. I'm only gonna leave these on for maybe like a week or 10 days and then I'm gonna take them off. Um, and make sure you don't cover up your bud. This one's like right below this bud right here. So you don't wanna cover up, you want your buds to kind of push through. And part of the beauty of this buddy tape is they'll just go right through that buddy tape and start growing out, which you can see if you look at, uh, let's see. Here's one that we grafted uh, probably a couple months ago and the buddy tape is still there, but all the leaflets, all the nodes when they pushed out, they just pushed straight through. And I'm gonna make sure if this doesn't deteriorate well enough, I'm gonna put a little slice in it so as it grows, it kind of grows, pushes its, its way out of there. At that point, do you cut the top off of the... Yes, that's exactly what I was gonna tell you. So there's something called apical dominance. The plant wants to send all its energy to its topmost bud. So that's up here. But we can kind of um, get rid of that apical dominance by cutting the apical dominant bud off. So now that energy is all is going to go. And when you prune this exact same, so if you'll notice when you, when you, if I prune this right here, these buds are going to grow. And this is how you get to treat a branch, right? It's the same deal here. Now, instead of all that juice going straight to the top, it's gonna push all its energy outward. And it's gonna do that all up and down the tree. Um, and so you will get this to, to, um, to push out a lot faster that. It may still do it if you don't, but I don't take any chances if I can help it, so yes. Uh, were the buds that come out from the graft? Yeah. No, it's eventually, yeah. I mean, what we're going to do when this bud takes off, we're going to let it grow and harden off, and then we're going to start taking a little bit more. Maybe our next set of cuts will be like this. And the more that grows, the more we're going to take off the top of that until we only have our grafted tree left. So that's just that you do that incrementally. You don't do that. Yeah, I mean, you can, but if, I, I try not to shock them, especially if there's that much material above them. Usually you're going to have, um, you know, your one year old tree, you're going to have maybe one, one branch going straight up and you're just going to take, you can just tip the very, the very top of it. You can just, uh, the, the dominant bud is the one that's on the very end. If you take that one off, the rest of that um, energy is going to start flowing outwards. Okay. All right, so that's a veneer. That one's not as not my best, but I bet you that one's still gonna work out. Like I said, if you get one side to heal up, that whole thing, it'll just sap will fill in and it will callus over. And I've actually done ones where the, the wood was really hard and stiff and there was a little gap left in a cleft graft and that gap ended up filling up. It took longer, you know, probably three months, but eventually that, that it filled in. So there was a cleft, there was a veneer. I'm not really gonna do an approach. I don't really have anything to tie them up with, but you can get a five gallon bucket and set that approach, that rootstock right next to it for your approach graft. Go do a quick search for approach graft on YouTube. A million uh, videos will pop up for that. Uh, what did I just do with that veneer down here? Let's see, that was a shrieking banging. That's the one. Oh, sorry, bud. I'm in the zone right now, kiddo. 
Shri Kim Bang in, what do we say, 3-7? All right, bam, that's it. That's the whole show. You guys have any, any more questions? Thank you, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for having me out. All right, my name is Randy Broski. The name of the nursery is Growing Earthly. You can find me on Instagram, growing underscore earthly. Uh, there's a Facebook page with the same name, and you can always find me at the Mount Dora Farmer's Market every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m.